This video is brought to you by Ravenscraft Realty of Northeast Missouri. Okay, the Marion County Fair is this week, so I have to get the 4020, 4320, and 7020 all ready to go up and uh, in a timely manner. We are also going to a truck pull in Adams County at the Adams County Illinois Fair. So, got a busy afternoon ahead of me. I'm gonna take this home, wash some of the bird stuff off the hood, and then I'm gonna take it up to Palmyra and dad's gonna pick me up. And we'll go then go from there to the Adams County Fair. All right, 4320 stuff. Uh, I got the fuel lines off, got the return line off. I pulled number three injector right there. I think the washer had failed and I got a new washer under it now and I'm gonna get it torqued down. I'm gonna need Justin's help real quick. Just need a extra set of hands to hold uh, this pry bar so that the injector stays straight. Okay, I did not need Justin's help for that. So this is the final torque. We're going to uh, 50 foot pounds. Oh yeah. Okay, so today I didn't really video probably like I should have. But anyways, I uh, got the injector sealing properly now and got the M&W pan on. That's pretty cool. Uh, I really haven't seen, I don't think, I, I don't think I've seen any other 4320s with an M&W pan. So now I have one. But anyways, uh, I think it, it holds five gallons of oil, whereas a normal one or a, a conventional 4320 pan is going to hold four quarts or not four quarts, four gallons. 16 quarts versus this one is now 20. And uh, I'm gonna take it up to the fair once it drip dries off a little bit more. Don't wanna be sitting on a wet seat and I'm filthy. And I actually did not make a mess of the shop floor, so go me. Here's a little walk around of the pretty girl. And man, she is pretty. All right, it's time to head out. Sun's starting to get a little bit lower. Actually, today was a really nice day. Uh, I only got to about 83 degrees. Uh, stark contrast to the 100 degree heat that we've been having the last week, which has done a number on the corn. All right, let's go. This is my favorite sound. I'm even gonna try to get old G up here to the fair. So I got the jumper pack on it because this battery is from like 2019. I'm gonna do some carburetor stuff. Choke is out. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Here she is, and all of her uh, lead-based paint, original glory. Getting some fuel in it so that I don't have a repeat of last year, and then we're gonna head uptown. All right, let's pull. You'll notice that the 7020 is absent from the class. I have a story for you later. I did not pull the 7020 in the fair last night because there's a giant spot of oil right there and the 7020 is sitting over there right now. 
as I was sitting waiting to turn in, there was like 20 cars uh, waiting to turn right. So I I noticed that uh, my tires were covered with oil and that's not a good sign. So I illegally turned in just to get off the road and avoid locking a hydraulic pump up. And uh, I got to looking at it and 95% sure the uh, seal in the front hydraulic pump is uh, not sealing anything anymore. And I have the special tool from John Deere to do that job. Thank you, Doug. And I have the seal. Obviously, I'm not gonna do it at the moment because it's raining, but I just wanted to revisit the scene of the crime. So on this tractor, the pump is in this area right here. So there's the fan shroud, and then the radiator is closer to the front here. So I've got about 16 inches to work in to get the pump out of there. And there's nothing in this giant void in there, so it should be easy to get. But I actually have to grab the speaker out of the tractor because Rob and Justin want it. But uh, the whole side of the tractor is covered with hydraulic oil right now. Yay. I am now in an unknown location close to uh, uh, Tunas, Missouri. Uh, down here kind of south of Jeff City, uh, the Lake Ozarks area. And uh, just picked up some wheel weights. They're in the back of the truck now. And uh, heading back to Palmyra or Hannibal, whichever you choose. And I'm going to make a stop along the way. This was yet another uh, Facebook uh, find. Uh, give, I bought four weights. They're not the Z uh, cut out, but they're the style before that. 75 bucks each. That was worth driving uh, three-ish hours for. But uh, got a pretty good deal on those. Well, that was a lot of fun. And that would be the reason why I was losing all my hydraulic oil. Got my new pump from my man, Chris. He's watching. But thank you, Chris. And I got this uh, disaster. Got a ratchet strap holding the radiator forward. I got everything taken apart oh yeah and i only screwed up the radiator a little bit it'll be okay well let's get the new one in and get it put back together right where i left it okay detailed story time of what happened to the 7020 at the fair so on tuesday when i took this thing up to the fair um the, most of the trip went okay until i got like in town and I noticed that the inside of this wheel and the inside of this wheel were wet and uh, when I came to a stop uh, waiting to turn in and I moved forward and about 10 feet I could see behind me and I had left a puddle of hydraulic oil it's not good so I uh, did some bad things to get off the road and I got myself parked and uh, tried to diagnose the problem and this is what i found i pulled some of the shields off like up in this area and then i got to looking down here and this is where the problem started so the whole bottom of this pump uh, i'll see if i can get a picture of it in the video but whole bottom of it was wet i mean dripping just hydraulic oil a constant uh kind of a stream coming down and there was a really big puddle. This is all just stuff that washed out of there. And this is mostly water. But anyways, giant um, drip coming off of there. And everything up here was wet, just soaked with oil. That's obviously not good. And I had to figure out what to do pretty quickly because the tractor was pretty much immobile and I was probably gonna have to fix it at the fair, which I ended up doing. I do still have the old pump and we'll take a look at it here real quick and see if you can spot the problem. So it's okay, it's okay. And we get up here to the seal. That is the problem. And the seal is just completely torn and it was allowing all sorts of oil to pass by. So once I deduced that the pump was in fact the problem, I faced a choice. It was either uh, use a special tool that the uh, John Deere techs had, uh, which could try to pull the seal and replace the seal while I was still on the tractor in that area, 
or I could pull the pump and replace the pump. And uh, obviously you can see which one I chose to do. I spent an hour and a half or so trying to get the snap ring out that held the uh, seal in and no success. So I quit wasting time doing that and I got to work uh, taking loose all the hydraulic lines. Of course, there's only four of them. Uh, there's inlet, outlet, um, the big one on top here that goes to the hydraulic accumulator in here. And then a little return line that goes back to the clutch housing. So only four lines. Uh, there's four three quarter or not, not three quarter half inch bolts that hold it into the spot where it's at. And then you got to uncouple the drive that goes from the engine to the pump. And uh, I ended up also having to undo the radiator most of the way and use some ratchet straps to pull it forward. And I did not video most of this because this was one of those jobs where you uh, just get it done and then talk about it later. So I had this thing apart between two shade trees at the uh, Marion County Fair and the radiator was all the way up here and leaned forward quite a, quite a ways and I had the pump and got it out. I did get into the radiator a little bit there but it's not leaking and I tightened up all the lines and I managed to get a remanufactured pump from a friend of mine who had it sitting around for a 4440 that got wrecked and major thank you to him for uh selling that to me so that was a thousand dollar pump right there and then uh i don't know fifty dollars worth of o-rings and uh, the rubber bushings for the coupler i replaced those as well and about 12 hours of frustration i did get it replaced i got it fixed and i moved it in line with the other tractors i took to the fair and dad and i brought all of them home today and i tightened up all the lines and fittings that I could find and I did some fixing up here in the battery box department or the battery compartment I guess I put a I put bed liner down uh, below the a rubber mat that I also cut to fit and uh, it looks pretty good this tractor's still not charging properly so I'll have to get to the bottom of that but I'm pretty pretty satisfied with how things turned out given how my week started I've had the hood jacked up like this uh, a majority of the past couple days. But this is the last time uh, I'm going to go inside and eat supper, come back out and get this thing resituated and uh, covered back up and cleaned up. And I've got some other disc projects to work on while I'm here. So if you saw me at the fair and I looked pissed off, it's because I was, because I was dealing with this. And really the only tools I needed to do this job were was a set of standard wrenches and two ratchet straps. Um, I also used a uh, Milwaukee 3 Ace Impact just to make uh, bolts, bolting and unbolting things go a little bit quicker. But it really wasn't that bad of a fix. And now I know a little bit more about how to do it quicker when I do the 4020. The pump that I've got sitting inside the shop is going to be rebuilt and put on the 4020 this winter. This could have ended a lot worse. And uh, Dad and I uh, took 4020 and the 7020 home at the same time. He was right behind me going down the road, and he uh, called me after I got home. He said, hey, you might want to go back and look for your wrench. I said, what? Yeah. I could not find my half-inch wrench and uh, looked everywhere for it. Nothing. Apparently, it was hidden somewhere in a crevice in that tractor and it fell down on main street and i was able to find it again so go me i'm glad no one picked it up all right we're back together and gonna head back over to grandpa's house where this thing is gonna stay for a little while also i stole the cat 3 quick hitch off of the 8400 so that i can pull my plow my assistant and i got to go on a little Hydraulic hose uh, dropping off adventure, and somebody got some hose material on their face. Wonder how that happened. Wish you're such a good dog. Go, Dad, go. Dad has only gotten stuck in the uh, median once while mowing the yard. It was pretty good. Usually he's more often than that. Another beautiful night here in Northeast Missouri. And if you have observed that I am not wearing a shirt, you are in fact correct. 
uh, because I went inside to eat supper. My shirt was soaked with sweat and it started to cool off. Now it's only like 80 degrees. It was like 92 beforehand. Uh, and my shirt had not yet dried out, so I just I just rolled without it. I'm just rocking the jeans at the moment. But we're gonna close this video out real quick. I gotta show you something pretty cool. But uh, once we do that, we're gonna close the video. What I have to show you is hooked onto the 7020. So we're gonna back it out of the shed real quick into what's left of the daylight, show you what's going on. So what I have to show you is something that rhymes with DMI and uh, plow. And it's very big, comically big in fact. So I got my quick hitch on to lift this plow. Got all the lights working, no hydraulic oil dripping. And there it is. I bet this is the first John Deere 7020 that you've ever seen pulling a five bottom DMI Hydra wide. This thing is huge. For reference, I am 5'11 on a good day. 5'10 every day, 5'10 and a half-ish. And this plow is up to my shoulders. So it's pretty darn big. I stole the uh, quick hitch and top link off the 8400. Grandpa didn't like that. And then got my new three-point control cable. So right now it's set all the way at 22 inches, which means that uh, the bottom is tilted in such a way that it'll cut a 22 inch uh, uh, slice of ground at this setting. Okay, the half century progress show is in 16 days. I will be there Friday through most of Sunday and I'm probably gonna bring the 7020 and either the plow or the 4320 in the disc and the 7020, I'm not really sure yet. But uh, if you've ever want, wondered what a uh, Hydra wide looks like hooked up to a 7020. This is what it looks like. So, thanks for watching, and I appreciate you sticking through this video with me. I know I've been doing the every two weeks thing instead of the every week thing now for a little while, but uh, it's just sometimes it doesn't work out the way I want to. But, anyways, this is pretty cool, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you should, you should subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.